Hello everybody, we're back here on Gelvin Valley for Farming Simulator 2015 and we're in the middle of rolling the fields and punching some of our rocks into the soil that would hinder us as we would attempt to plant at some point. Uh, each time the rocks are crunched into the soil, we can generally hear that happen with uh, when it goes tink. <laughs> and I kind of described all this, I think, in maybe it was a last video, I don't remember, showing kind of how this mod works. Suffice it to say, it's the early morning hours and we're trying to get some work done. Yeah, I see a really tiny rock there off to the right that will knock in. Uh, a couple of them actually. But those larger ones, yeah, and one of them's coming up. We're not going to be able to smash. And we'll just show it here. We'll see kind of how it behaves. I think it's going to push the rock. Yep, the, uh, that's exactly what it does. So we'll uh, just leave her there. Kind of a saying I would hear in my family from time to time. The rocks that are too heavy, you just let that play. I was going to try something, too, a little different this go-around. I mean, I realize, I don't know how many episodes this is. I almost think I've reached 50, maybe. These are scheduled so far out that even though I'm recording it here in, I guess this is early July, probably won't even be heard, maybe not by anybody until, uh, shoot, October, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, because I keep showing everybody everything that I do on this particular map. But one of the things I wanted to try doing, and I did it uh, one night, I think I read something that my son wrote to himself. Um, I think when he was a, an 8th grader or ninth grader, and he, it was kind of like a little time capsule, and he opened it up when he graduated from high school to see kind of what was on his mind uh, when he was, you know, first coming in. So it was kind of interesting to see the perspective he had when he was younger and, and in some ways how mature it was and in other ways, you know, things that he didn't know that, that you know, he'd eventually figure out or, or what have you. So uh, I say all that just to say I attempted to read something while doing all this you know something it sure would be nice if those tires didn't drop a yeah they're ah, I'm missing a spot it would be nice if they didn't leave their tracks wouldn't it there it goes tink one more rock smashed another rock smashed yoohoo Sweet music to my ears, getting rid of rocks. Maybe this is how it would be in real life. You know, I look at those. Oh, I'm sure glad when the lights turn on. It's five in the morning. Yeah. I maybe should have fast forwarded a little bit further, but uh, the trouble is, I've already rented the uh, roller here, so I don't want to do too much fast forward. Always just has trouble going this way. I wonder if this tractor is a little underpowered for whatever this roller would require. But I think this tractor should be able to handle it perfectly. I mean, this isn't that massive of a roller. So maybe I need to mod the roller a little bit so it doesn't require so many horses under the hood, you know, to haul the thing around. I mean, this should be, this should be easy, easy for it to haul over it over the fuel. It's pulling more kind of like a cultivator would, even though it isn't a cultivator. That may be what stops it to, you know, at one point I had modded this so it didn't leave or didn't cultivate the soil. And, you know, so in other words, it would roll over the dirt and it would leave the plow texture like we're doing here. Um, but I opted to have a change the surface of the soil a little bit, just like it would in real life. So we're giving all of these fields kind of a 
a double going over, ripping it up with the chisel plow and then coming in behind with this little end. You know, I'd be curious to know, that's just a general question I'll ask and throw out there if anybody ever listens to this. I'm always fascinated hearing other people's, uh, how they play the game, uh, what they do that may be different from what I do or, or others. And what do you do to get more enjoyment out of it? I mean, do you no-till? Uh, do you do kind of like I'm doing here where you work the field twice even though you don't have to and then plant it you know what other things do you do and maybe some of it is simply using the soil mod and being forced to i think i was reading a comment by reefy 1952 and he oh wait a second you know what i think i'm gonna go do this field over here real quick or heading on up and around so otherwise i'm gonna come back to it but I think Reefy 1952 mentioned, you know, the the dearth of rain in the game. You know, it doesn't rain that often, so if you use the soil mod, a lot of times your your time is spent hauling water to your crops just to give them adequate moisture. So, so I guess that would be lots of uh, field operations, if you will. Lots of times over the field doing different things so maybe some people don't like that you know maybe they prefer to keep things moving and quickly get to harvest quickly get the harvest done so they can move on probably all depends on a person's playing style um, oop, I still have my indicator lights on but I don't mind I, I rarely get bored with doing anything in here so whether it takes time doing more field work or whatever, I really don't care. I will say this, though. One thing I don't like to do is to do something twice that I've already done. Meaning, if the game, for example, were to crash right now, and I didn't say what I had done here, and so I had to restart the game and come back in here, and redo everything I've already just done since starting here. That I don't like to do. I don't know why. That's just me. But otherwise, it's all good. Oh, cool. Here comes a couple rocks. Maybe I can get. Uh, I'm not quite going to reach out. Here. There goes another. Love it. So anyway, I was thinking of trying something a little bit different here. Oh, the ground's a little uneven, it's going to make it harder to... And seeing if I could read a... kind of like I did with my son, and what he wrote. You know, I mentioned, um, I think in an earlier Kelvin Valley video, some of my upbringing. I think I talked about my father. And... He also is an accountant, just like I am, I guess I followed in his footsteps. But he also was a storyteller, at least in terms of children's stories. And so it was a frequent occurrence growing up, you know, that when he would put us to bed at night, you know, we'd gather around him, climb all over him, you know, the thing that little kids do. And he would uh, tell us a story, a bedtime story. And he would just make it up off the cuff on the spot. And, you know, I remember sometimes just howling my head with laughter. You know, they just seem so funny. Oh, look at that little rock. It's stuck in there. Hang on a second here. I'm going to lift it and I'm going to drop it. There we go. Got him. Yeah, I think it got caught kind of on the collisions on the front of that, that particular rock. But he would just tell us stories about whatever came to mind in his head and a lot of them I can't remember how much of this I described before but it was about he would and maybe some of what seems so relatable or so funny is he would tell them with his kids in the story and invariably it was a rabbit family I don't know why he chose rabbits um, 
but it always started kind of the same way probably so he could think on what kind of a story you know it would be about this rabbit family living in a cottonwood tree a cottonwood tree was on the banks of the river to nowhere and it came from nowhere it went to nowhere and at the top of the cottonwood tree mr ball the eagle lived up there he had a nest and so he was up there, and I think he kind of incorporated some of Beatrix Potter's works. I mean, there was a Mr. McGregor down the road that had a garden, and you know, so there was a couple stories that involved that, going and robbing vegetables or whatever. But a lot of them were just silly life stories. You know, I, I think there's a term for it, you know, where you... I, oh, well, that's basically what Walt Disney does every time they put out an animated movie or whatever. It gives voices to, uh, well, even inanimate objects, but to animals and what have you. They have thoughts and feelings just like a human would. So that tended to be his stories, and most of them, like I say, were kind of about a rabbit family. So he would describe the family, you know, there would be a mommy rabbit, a daddy rabbit, and, and then he would cycle through the names of uh, all the kids in the family. You know, my name is Aiden, so it'd be like Aiden Rabbit, and he would go on with my siblings and so forth. And then he'd get to the end, and there was always a fictional rabbit, a uh, Buster Rabbit. And, you know, Buster, of course, doesn't exist in real life, and I'm not sure why there was one made up. Um, maybe he figured that if one of them was going to get into trouble in the story, you know, maybe do some things that aren't advisable, it would be the fictional one, or maybe if they were going to experience some kind of, I don't know, I, I don't even want to use the word trauma, some scary thing, maybe it'd be the fictional one that experienced it, so it wouldn't traumatize us, I, I don't know, and these weren't traumatizing stories, I'm not trying to say that at all, they were, like I say, primarily geared to make us laugh and, you know, eventually to fall asleep or get settled down to, to head off to bed. So, sometimes they were rabbits. I mean, he, out every animal you could think of at one time or other, you know, comprised our family. I remember he even used worms. I guess about the only thing I don't remember him suggesting was, you know, a family of bacteria. You know, he at least didn't take it to that. Uh, but worms, cattle, skunk, possums, uh, you name it, uh, it was there. Um, and so, one of the stories he told us in our growing up years was about a go-kart race. We, uh, oh, that's a Adam's here. We had a go-kart as kids. I don't remember when Dad bought it for us. Um, is that a the smash? Let me see. Oh, it did. Just, I had to lift it a little bit before smashing it. We had a go-kart as kids, and I don't know how old I was when Dad got it for us. It had a governor on it, so we couldn't go too fast with it. I think it topped it out at like a whopping 18 to 20 miles an hour. In later years, the governor was taken off, and uh, different sprockets were used, and that sucker can move now. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if it could go probably 40. Uh, I don't even think I've had it at top speed. So we occasionally will bring it out. I live near my folks, and, and so we can take it out. But, uh, so we had is we talked periodically about what it would be like to race it and that kind of thing and so my dad one time crafted a story about a go-kart race and he told this to us off the cuff one night and we just loved it and it was one of those that had, for a long period afterwards you would refer back to it and repeat it, repeat the things that he said, and we would laugh all over again, and I don't know why it was so funny, you know, I, I look back at the story as an adult, and it makes me smile, mainly because, you know, I remember my father and, you know, just the, the simple love he had for his children, you know, that would, that would induce him to spend the time to, to do this kind of thing, to entertain us and try to 
settles into bed i mean that's a good way to spend a childhood if you will so so i have that story in front of me and what i did later it was several years later when i was in middle school middle school being this oh oh i can go up this way being the seventh and eighth grades, um, there was, you know, you take a literature writing class somewhere in there, and we would occasionally write short stories for class, you know, as part of an assignment or what have you. So, one of the stories that I wrote was the go kart race, you know, that he told us when we were, were uh, younger. And there was another one of his that I wrote up. And I think I have a copy of it somewhere. It was about a Christmas sled. So maybe at some point I'll see if I can dig that one up. But I was thinking just for kicks, you know, maybe I would try to read the go-kart story in here. Um, and, you know, I see my time is rapidly moving on. I kind of started my timer a little bit late. So I don't know if I'm 20 minutes in already or just how much... Um, time I already have on here, so maybe I'll, I'll try that on the next episode. Um, so I, I have a couple stories I can read. I don't know if that's something people would like to hear, but but I tell you, I gotta come up with something to say in here. <laughs> and it can't just be about the farm at all the time. Oh man, this hill is steep. All the hills in here are steep. My goodness. Lisa's is slowly getting lighter so we can see a little better kind of what we're doing. Come on up the hill. Let's get our fields rolled. So maybe if I try to read it in the next one, um, maybe what I'll do is uh, now the go kart story or the go-kart race it involves some other characters you know my dad I mean there was the main family of rabbits if you will um, oh, it doesn't like going on that edge what's the problem there must be some uneven terrain or something it isn't quite right okay, let me turn off my indicators because we're in the field let's see if I me. I was just going to tickle that one along until there we go. I got rid of him. But my dad would introduce other characters um, at his whim. So one of the characters in the Bill Car Days is called Uncle Henry. And he told us years later that the Uncle Henry came from a story he had read that was. I can't remember if it was a story, a British story or something. It was someone in the family that came from a long line of wealth. And it was Uncle Henry who lost the family fortune. And after him, the whole family was no longer wealth. The wealth was gone. They no longer had any renown or whatever. They were just commoners like anyone else. So my dad, uh, I don't know what that story was. He maybe doesn't even remember the details or particulars of it. But apparently this Henry was kind of a, uh, oh, kind of one who pontificates over things that he doesn't know anything about. Makes a lot of noise, but doesn't have a lot of substance. Is kind of a blowhard. You know, that kind of a person. And so he just, he built a character called Uncle Henry and injected him into the story, so he plays a prominent role in, in uh, the uh, go-kart race and getting the family involved with go-karts and racing and so forth. He also played a role in the story my dad told about the Christmas sled, where he had an idea for some fancy, fancy new sled and how to make it. And so he kind of was the butt of some jokes in the family, if you will. And, uh, but, but he always does make an appearance. I mean, there was another story my dad told where Uncle Henry said there was gold somewhere to be found, and he got the little rabbits, he induced him to go out and help him find all this gold, and it turns out it was fool's gold, and he made him work really super hard to haul all this 
fool's gold out of the hills or whatever, and it turns out it was worthless. So, and there's many more stories. I think I've just flat out forgotten. Um, I and we don't have that one that I'm aware of. I don't know that anybody has documented it. Some of my siblings, then, you know, when they went to school, I think they did something similar. They would write down some of these stories. There we go. Rocks be gone. <laughs> I didn't even maybe go raise the collisions a little bit, so some of those smaller rocks I don't have to raise and lower the roller. But oh well, it's getting the job done. So what do you do? And maybe this is one of our newest fields. I maybe got too close to the edge with the chisel plow. But hey, I look at how much I'm in the hole, and in some ways I shouldn't have started with doing this on the fields. I probably should be selling some of my smallest fields, and maybe, um, maybe, maybe selling some grain, so I can try to get ahead of that. So last episode that I had in here, it told me my bank loan was due. Please pay up, yeah, as if I could. I obviously have nothing. And a change the interest rate on me from, you know, whatever it was, up to 10%. So, now I'm paying through the nose. And I'm only going to get further in the hole. But, by the same token, I spent money trying to rent this here roller. So, I kind of got to keep it after it till I get the job done. got this cell phone over here trying to run my timer and it is hard to it it keeps going blank on me and I gotta enter my password in just to see the silly timer to see how much time how much of your time I've wasted. It says I'm at 20 minutes but I think I stopped it five minutes um, or started it five minutes too late. And this is a steep hill. Oh if only I could afford a tractor with more horsepower under the hood. And this thing would march on up the hill like a good feather. I think maybe after this round, I'm going to start going across the hill versus kind of up and around. So I think it'll work a little easier on not climbing the hill the whole time. Because I think you noticed on the other side coming down, it kind of sped up. I wasn't fighting gravity. But there were a lot of other stories my dad told that had nothing to do with animals. Um, sometimes he would do a Bible story, kind of in his own words, and bring it alive that way to us kids. Um, other times there would be situations, like he had a, a story about uh, or a character, what was his name, Policeman James? who walked the streets of Milwaukee and talked on his walkie-talkie. <laughs> that was kind of how we started it off. And so there would be cases that Policeman James would attempt to solve, and, you know, Dad would have some interesting weave of all the added to the imagination of things. Um, he did a number of stories about a Homer the Cowboy, uh, the American West and cowboy type things, that's a pretty common storyline um, in America, in the American psyche. So Dad was no different, he would tell stories about Homer the Cowboy, he kind of was a lackluster uh, kind of guy, but in the process, I mean, it kind of was an opportunity to learn, you know, it's... You know, some of the things Homer the Cowboy would do out chasing cows on his horse and, you know, drinking coffee in the morning as he'd get up and the troubles he had snoring at night and catching the cattle and branding them with the uh, boss's brand or whatever. And there'd be all kinds of escapades that he'd get into, whether it was a bad guy's coming trying to steal cattle and, and so forth. There was no limit to Dad's imagination. Boom, another rock gone. 
is still having a struggle getting the light. Hopefully it doesn't go all foggy on me. Maybe I'll see what... Oh, I do have fog for a couple hours. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's going to be... A <laughs> Most of what I'm going to do here is going to be kind of in... Uh, it won't be quite as light as I wish, but... Oh well. Alright, let me set up... There we go. Maybe, is that wide enough? Find uh, out, is that. You know, that'll probably be good enough. I can try and work with that. And it appears that I am still going uphill, even at this angle here, so. Yeah. The reality is, is this isn't going to be perfect. But we'll get the job done. I'm going to be lifted a little bit because I'm going to be coming through here again. And next time it'll be downhill. And maybe I can spread that out. How do I do that again? Is it three? Hit enter. Yeah, that's... There we go. It's a little wide. That's an upper right width, right? That way I don't have too many extra passes over the field. Now this ought to go quicker if I'm headed downhill. Looks like I skipped a little bit. And that's more straight across. Maybe I need to do a little bit of modding. Obviously the sound that we hear right now is that of a cultivator. So maybe if I gave it a different sound, like the sound of a roller, I gotta think about where to come up with the sound of the roller. Maybe someone has a suggestion. I suppose I could try to go out to the farm whenever they next plant and see if they have one. But that may take a while. So maybe I just need to look at some other mods. Maybe someone out there has fix the proper sound to the roller. And you know, at rollers, I think probably as everyone knows, in Farm Sims 17 and beyond, I think rollers were used to help trim the corners of fields, if you will, restore kind of what was underneath the uh, cultivation or, or plow texture that you had just done to a field. So if you kind of goobered the edge of the field, you could always come in, you know, with the plow, when you made a new one, you could kind of come in and smooth it off, you know, with a roller. But back in 15, the rollers didn't serve uh, that type of purpose, so um, we're, I think a lot of mods just kind of turned them into uh, a type of cultivator, kind of like this one here, if you will. She is pulling like a cultivator, too. So anyway, um, I think we're drawing to a close here on this uh, particular episode. Next time, and maybe the GPS will help, I'm going to try to read one of my old stories. And we'll see uh, what you all think of it. So... Um, thank you for stopping by to watch this episode as I work the tractor across the field a time or two, and for listening to me dribble on about this, that, and the other. So, again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.